So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about this very interesting Parker Jotter ballpoint pen. This is a vintage Jotter. I don't know the exact date of this one. It doesn't seem to be stamped in the way Parker stamped some of them, but has a couple interesting features that I think makes it worth noting if you're curious about the history of the Jotter. And I bought this one uh, new old stock, so it came just as you see it with the, the box and the instructions and everything. Uh, so th what this one is, it's a calendar jotter. Maybe there was an official name for it, but I've always heard it referred to as the calendar jotter. So it has a window here. You can see there, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then some uh, dates. And then what happens is you would spin this to line up with the, uh, the date configuration of the month and the year you're in. So uh, say it's the 21st of the month and it's a Sunday, you would spin this until you see that S right there. This, this week, as per this pen, starts on Sunday. And you have it there, Sunday the 21st. This is a month with 31 days, so we're pretty good there. If you spin it, you could change it to a different month configuration. Maybe the month started on a Saturday the 1st, or Sunday the 1st, or Monday the 2nd, or what have you, right? You could configure it based on that. It's not perfect. It doesn't have uh, any allowance for February in there, so a 28-day month, or a leap year, or a 29-day month. Nothing, nothing like that. It's not computerized. It's just a convenient way to figure out, oh, uh, say it's Wednesday, most people know it's Wednesday, but it's easy to forget. It's today the 7th or the 8th. You got it there. Obviously, this was uh, something that was existing before, uh, you know, the ubiquity of cell phones and computers. You know, you didn't have a, a computer with you all the time. So uh, if you didn't have a calendar handy, this would be pretty useful. It is a little finicky, I will say. So the chance that this thing spins in your pocket is, uh, for me, non-zero plus anything spinning on a pen I intend to play with. So uh, I don't think it's a perfect tool, but it's definitely a fun idea. This particular jotter would have been considered an advertising pen because it has the ad here. It says, uh, promote Sears detergent with every customer contact. Both you and your customers will benefit. And then there's a little logo of a Sears laundry detergent, heavy duty laundry detergent. So this was probably a pen that was given out to a salesman. And uh, it was advertising, I, I guess it's technically called an advertising pen because it's uh, you know promoting a message, but it would have been telling the salesman or uh, reinforcing that the salesman do this uh, promotional idea. Has a calendar, probably useful in a professional setting. It is a clicky jotter. It's got an, an amazing click. Just like using it, it makes me, it really reminds me of how well-made the jotters were back then. This is a, again, there's no date stamp on this one, so I have no idea exactly when it was from, but uh, we see it's a made in the USA jotter. You tell from that stainless steel, it's really nice looking. The pattern of this has changed over the years. It's a heavier duty and it's better looking back then. It has the brass threading which is, uh, I think, pre-1980s or maybe part of the 1980s. They switched over to the plastic threading. And basically, when you're looking for a, a uh, jotter, a vintage jotter, most of the times the, uh, the ad or either whatever you're looking for, the listing will say uh, brass threading jotter. And that means you're getting these old ones with a really, really solid build quality. Here you can see a little bit of a gap here. There's a little bit extra gap there. That's just a bit of a manufacturing inconsistency or maybe a kind of spread out. Over the years, we see a uh, the button is convex. These changed over the years. Some were some are ridged, some were slight like convex but different. Some are concave. This is uh, this sort of uh, my favorite variety, but they do change, and none is better than the other. There's that uh, Parker logo made in the USA, and then Parker inside the pen. I believe this is the original. Refill, it was sold in new old stock. So this is the T-ball jotter. This is the one that was sold, the T-ball, meaning it had a tungsten ball, which was a very heavy, durable metal uh, with stainless steel. Uh, I don't know what that means. 
maybe they switched to stainless steel tip or I don't know what, but I, I believe T-ball was originally meant tungsten ball and uh, blue in color. This is plastic, so it's not quite as old as maybe I might be imagining. We'll see if it writes in a minute, and then we'll get into the materials. Actually, you can see this, this piece pulls off. You can see uh, basically it's one very large calendar because you have to accommodate every possible day or day that could be the first. So you get some extra width there, and then obviously there's multiple 31sts. If you screw this down tighter, this piece locks in better. So will it slide around your pocket? Maybe over time, but if you keep this nice and cranked, then your calendar will be locked in. There's that click. Let's do it one more time. Just a really nice, clean feel. It's a little bit more muted than some of the other jotters. Yeah, and then it writes, which is quite nice. Uh, especially considering this is probably a, I don't know, maybe a 40 or 50 year old pen. It's hard to say, but if they're advertising seals, Sears laundry detergent, uh, that's gotta be for me, it looks to be in the sixties or seventies based on that design there, but hard to say my guess would be the sixties, but it writes, it was probably the original refill. I wouldn't bet money on that. The, the reseller might've switched the refill out before I got it. Hard to say. Can't really complain about it writing though. Here's the packaging. Again, I believe this to be the original packaging. It was sold as being the original packaging, but uh, it's really hard to confirm that 100%. I'm not that much of a Parker expert. And I mean, there's really nothing to this. It's just some some cardboard, some like nicer like cardboard, I guess, or paper folded over it and glued. And then here we have the instructions. How to set your Parker pen or pencil calendar. Loosen the barrel. Initials on the top band, the metal sleeve, correspond to the days of the week. Simply rotate the sleeve until the initial for the first day of the month is lined up with the printed number one, just as I suggested. Uh, and then uh, hold the sleeve firmly in place, in place, tighten the cap, and you're set for another month of good writing and ready calendar reference. This is great. Uh, here is a uh, piece here, so 472. I don't know for a fact that that means uh, April 1972, but based on like the design and the prominence of Sears and Sears doing internal promotions to salesmen, uh, 1972 sounds sounds reasonable to me. And then uh, you know it's not like I could you know radiocarbon date this paper, but I'm gonna go with 1972. That makes a lot of sense. So I put it right around 50 years old, give or take. Yeah, that's pretty much it. This is a good example again of a advertising jotter which is a jotter with a promotional message. Advertising pens are very much a thing for a very long time. Uh, I guess they kind of still are, but not really like they were. It's also a calendar jotter, which is uh, quite prominent here. And then it's a really great example of an old school, kind of like for me, the really the prime quality brass threaded jotter that is really getting the, uh, the really nice writing that uh, you'd want. Of course, the flighter, the stainless steel matched with stainless steel would generally be the, the uh, preferable model for a collector or someone that was buying now. But the uh, threading is basically universal over time. So if you just kind of hated this lower tip, you could use the upper and the refill in a, uh, in a different jotter, or you could just kind of enjoy this, uh, this old school plastic bottom. So that pretty much covers it. Thanks for watching.